fellow citizens and residents, you will be pleased to learn that the prudent fiscal management of the affairs of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis that has been the hallmark of our team unity administration continues. Our fiscal results for the period, 1st January to the 30th of April 2019 indicate, one, we have achieved a surplus on the recurrent account. Our overall balance reveals a, surplu a surplus, and the primary account is also showing a significant surplus. The next fiscal position is remarkably strong at the end of April. And on all of these principal accounts, we are showing a surplus in excess of $100 million. Our fiscal house, then, is robustly strong and one of the best, if not the best, in the region at this time. Let me take the opportunity to commend my support staff in the Ministry of Finance, in particular the Financial Secretary, Mrs. Hilary Hazel, and the heads of our key revenue collecting departments. Among them, Mr. Edward Giff at Illinois Revenue, Mr. Kennedy De Silva at Customs and Excise, and Mr. Levi Bratcher, who heads the Accountant General Department. We certainly appreciate the good efforts of all our public servants. Based on our excellent performance to date, the revenue and grants target for 2019 seems very much realizable. Contrary to the doom and gloom presented during the 2019 budget debate from an opposition out of sync with the virtues of fiscal management, our projections so far have proven to be conservative and realistic. Very significantly, we are likely to surpass our best estimates of revenue for 2019 should the positive returns continue at this pace. There is no room for complacency, I must warn and we urge those who owe taxes of any type to pay them promptly. Our excellent expenditure management has kept actual total expenditure to date close to the budget target that is just over 200 plus million dollars. Again, the realism of our budget estimates way back then in December when we presented them is being vindicated. Our healthy and growing economy is producing record revenues at levels to cover our expenses and produce savings for a rainy day and for our legacy projects like the Unity Bridge connecting St. Kitts and Davis. Our CBI program enters its 35th year this year it remains the first and the best citizenship by investment program in the world. Our program has provided the intellectual underpinnings for subsequent programs and permutations thereof by countries such as the United States of America, Canada, Malta, Cyprus, all of which have their versions of the CBI programs. Our program provides an alternative pathway for attracting foreign investments to spur economic growth, create jobs, build out the resilience of our country to climate change and catastrophes, and to allow our people the opportunity to meet the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. For the second time, St. Kitts and Nevis will host the Caribbean Invest Summit over the period 19 to 21st June 2019. We are grateful to be hosts of this prestigious event and to build a network for greater cooperation and harmonization of the CBI programs in the region. Our due diligence is one of the best in the world. It is multi-layered 
and multifaceted using international firms and agencies. We do not accept applicants from states labeled as uncooperative in the fight against terrorism or considered to be rogue nations. We cooperate extensively with the European Union, the United States of America, and Canada. We have excellent relationships with our regional and international crime fighting agencies, including IMPACTS, including the JRCC, and Interpol. Our support is reflected in that we keep our contributions up to date. We are largely compliant with respect to the OECD requirements for transparency in tax matters. We are compliant with the European Union's requirements. We change ever too often, and we are an excellent performer and the World Justice Project Rule of Law Index for 2019. We are among the top 30 best performing countries and the rule of law. We are number one in the OECS and number two in the sub-region on that index. In the context of the foregoing, we are very disappointed that two members of the European Parliament would have written a letter to the EU Commission and the President of the European Council to request scrutiny of our program without a scintilla of evidence of any wrongdoing by anyone in our program. They relied largely on the misdeeds of the former Douglas regime and the inaccurate claim that a Russian citizen of interest to law enforcement agencies was an economic citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis way back in 2014. It is not a good reflection of the reliability and seriousness of members of the European Parliament that they should seek punitive action against any entity without giving the accused the benefit of due process and natural justice and without regard for the consequence of their ill-informed letter, not just for the viability of our program, but for all programs in the region. We therefore call on those two MPs, Madam Gomez and Shark, to recall their letters and to apologize to our people for the arguments on which they had based their recommendation to the Commission were basically false, fake news, nothing of the current <coughs> reality with respect to our program. The instances which they quoted were instances related to a regime that had long passed and it no longer exists in the context of St. Kitts and Nevis. That is, the people in February 2015 voted for a better way. And we as a government, we have been delivering that better way in terms of our management of the program. My government is satisfied that the significant reforms which, which we have made to the CBI program since coming to office, our high level of cooperation with our international partners, and the excellent quality of our due diligence system have transformed our program into an international leader amongst all programs. We will continue to be a very responsible and reliable member of the international community. Our only regret is that our predecessors in government had not exercised the same due care and attention. We inherited serious problems in 2015, but we have since corrected that history and we now have the best CBI program in the world. We are open, transparent, and democratic. And our program provides the global platinum standard for safety and security. I want to reflect briefly on my visit to Washington, D.C. over the period 22nd to the 27th of May. That visit was very productive. The first round of engagement involved my participation 
in the World Bank ECCB workshop on the digital economy moonshot. Given the ubiquitous nature of the digital economy and its importance as a driver and enabler of economic growth and inclusiveness, it was important that St. Kitts and Nevis be represented. I was supported at these meetings by the Financial Secretary, Ms. Hilary Hazel, Ambassador, Dr. Thelma Philip Brown. Indeed, I should also note, my press secretary was part of the delegation and her excellent literary skills were commended by the director for the World Bank with responsibility for Latin America and the region. And I also want to commend her because on that note she made St. Kitts and Nevis proud. I had to intervene because I gathered there was an offer to recruit her at the bank and I said we will seize of her membership if that were to happen. So I commend her. St. Kitts and Nevis will incorporate the learning from that workshop in our built out of our ICT infrastructure, the development of our digital skills, the digital financial services regime, our digital platforms, and of course, the digital entrepreneurship in such a manner as to promote digital transformation and economic <laughs> development. A high-level delegation from the World Bank will visit us in the summer to render support to us in these areas and more. And in that regard, I want to commend our own local team, headed by the Honorable Attorney General, because long before this, we have been discussing several new ideas, such as introducing coding into our primary schools and giving our young people a head charge, um, a, a head start in the digital economy. So we are moving ahead. As we speak, we have a specialist in that area who has visited today and has met with officials from the land registry and I gather a wider meeting is planned for tomorrow so that we could see how we could add greater value to the services. So again, I commend the Honorable Attorney General for leadership in that particular area. The World Bank is committed to working with the currency union in harmonizing policies and the legislative framework that are critical to the development of the digital economy. We have asked for support in the financial technology area, including policy and legislative support. Coming out of that meeting was an important offer of support with respect to climate change, resilience, and mitigation, particularly the prospects of St. Kitts and Nevis benefiting from the catastrophic disaster drawdown option was discussed. A window has been made available via the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. St. Kitts and Nevis, because of our high per capita GDP, cannot access international development assistance. Our GDP in 2017 was put at around 18,000 US dollars per capita. We were the highest in the OECS region and we were the second highest in Latin America and the Caribbean, excluding the USA and Canada, which are not our peers. This, in my view, is a remarkable position for St. Kitts and Nevis to be top of the class in terms of economic performance with respect to international indicators. I was a special guest at the Washington National Press Club, and I engaged the media on a wide range of issues impacting our development, including climate change, correspondent banking, digital economy, and of course, Venezuela featured. With respect to Venezuela, this coming Friday, our foreign minister and I will confer with a high-level representative of the Guaido faction as we seek to update ourselves on developments in Venezuela. I have also been invited by the European Union to talks to be held early in June 
and the said matter of Venezuela as part of, well, with members of the international counter coup. What is happening now is that the various interested stakeholders <coughs> are attempting to harmonize and to close the gap with respect to our policy prescriptions so that we could move forward as close as possible in a consensual manner with respect to the crisis in Venezuela. Perhaps my most memorable event outside of the conference workshop was the highly interactive engagement with our nationals in Washington, D.C. And I had two occasions to do this. Saturday at the picnic with the Nevis Nevisian Association in D.C. I had this special opportunity to meet a well-known blogger residing in the USA, and I want to thank him for the interview which he conducted and which I gather had received wide listenership and view viewership. Sunday, there was a town hall on the eve of Memorial Day. The topics we discussed there were wide-ranging. We had very helpful suggestions coming from our nationals, and interesting ideas were put forward on constitutional reform, general elections, relations between the federal and local government, the cannabis industry, the kinds of investors we need to engage, and other issues in relation to health care and the national health insurance in particular. I want to thank the Honorable Patrice Leibard who joined me and provided excellent support at that event. The 2019 Atlantic hurricane season starts on the 1st June 2019. Thanks to our team Unity's Compassionate Hurricane Relief Program, over 2,000 families across the length and breadth of our country have received assistance. The beneficiaries include the elderly, the poor, the vulnerable, the handicapped, pastors, their churches, schools, early childhood care facilities, Carnival Village, and the UWI Open Campus Center, our fire stations and police stations, all receive support under this program. Never before in our nation's history, and certainly not in the 20-year period before Team Unity, has such a magnificent, helpful response followed post-hurricane ravages. We urge all citizens and residents to avoid complacency and begin now to make their best efforts to mitigate the exposure to loss of life and damage to property. NEMA is already being engaged and has already begun work and disaster preparedness and risk deduction. And we are happy to have Ms. Southwell, Vesta Southwell, here with us today. I am pleased to advise that the Honorable Attorney General, Mr. Vincent Byron, is the new chairman of the Interministerial National Emergency Operations Committee and Cabinet's representative at NEMA for the hurricane season. The Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Sean Richards, served as cabinet focal point in matters related to NEMA disaster preparedness and responses during the previous hurricane seasons. Seasons, I want to record cabinet's deep satisfaction and support for his Herculean efforts, dedication, and superb performance when he served in that capacity. He will be well missed and he has left a big shoe for the Honorable Attorney General to fill. The St. Kitts Evangelical Association, in collaboration with the Ministry of Ecclesiastical Affairs, has organized a national service of prayer for our safety and well-being during the 2019 hurricane season. And I gather from the peers in that ministry that this event is slated for Thursday 38 May 2019 at 7.30 p.m. The venue is the Evangelistic Center Needmus Estate in Bastia. 
We want to encourage all citizens and well-wishers and representatives of the media to participate in that important service. Third in some personal matters, I am happy to advise that the Honorable Van Samey, Minister with Responsibility for Social Security, has informed the Cabinet that Mr. Antonio Maynard, former Secretary General of the St. Kitts and Nevis National Commission for UNESCO, has been appointed Chief Executive Officer of the Social Security Board, effective June 2019. Mr. Maynard emerged as the best choice to lead Social Security at this point in time from a field of excellent candidates, some 51 of them, I'm told, applied for the post. Amongst the candidates were nationals from St. Kitts and Nevis, the Caribbean region, and beyond, including the USA and Canada. I commend Mr. Maynard for the major successes in his own career development, and I am certain that he will surpass all expectations. I prefer my gratitude to him for his contribution to national development through the UNESCO National Commission of St. Kitts and Nevis. Indeed, I was Minister of Education at the point when he was appointed to that particular post. And I have seen him grow and develop into one of the most productive secretaries general in the region, serving UNESCO. Mr. Maynard would have the necessary sensitivity to the present social and economic realities of St. Kitts and Nevis, and he would be able to bring the experience of his working in community with people to enhance his performance in this new position. I wish Mr. Maynard all the very best in his new assignment. He is an industrious and thoughtful person with a good head and a kind heart. And hopefully, there is no nepotism here. Elwita Simpson Brown is our new permanent secretary in the Ministry of Sustainable Development. She comes to the job with a wealth of knowledge in the human settlement sector and in human resource management. Ms. Beverly Harris continues in a supernumerary position to ensure orderly transition in that ministry. Ms. Harris is one of the longest serving civil servants, and I commend her service to nation building. In fact, she told me that she has had over 40 years serving in the civil service. Finally, my government has been pleased to welcome the distinguished foreign minister of the Republic of China, Dr. Joseph Wu, and his delegation to St. Kitts and Nevis. The visit helped to further strengthen our bilateral relationships. And the Republic of China, Taiwan, has pledged support for the historic Old Wood Bay Rehabilitation Project, which will enhance the safety and security of our road users and improve our socioeconomic life.